Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, welcome back to Learning Aim C uh, for Component 1. And I hope that you've already seen the video before this, which is basically an introduction to this whole task itself. Uh, there's a number of things we need to do, but we're going to start off with the section 1, which is, you know, I've titled section 1. Of course, when you do the real thing, you will have anything other than these tables, and then that's it. So you will have to use the knowledge you've gained uh, from this mock to, to go and actually attempt the real thing. So I've suggested that you do the user interface here, so you call it the user interface, and then with the first draft. And as you can tell from here, you've got section two, which is feedback. You can't do section two until you've done section one. So let's focus on this. Now this section heavily relies, really, sorry, let me say that again, relies heavily on you looking at your sketches. Now, if you've seen the videos uh, for learning game B, you will know that I did my sketches on the computer and here's what they look like, here we go. But I emphasize that you have to do it on A4 paper, by hand, using a pencil and a ruler, and you will have uh, annotated it the way you feel best. Now this is just one method of annotation where you have all your points at the bottom uh, or somewhere, and then you've numbered your points and basically have the numbers on the sketch itself to indicate what those elements should look like in the real thing. Now, some of you may prefer to actually have this sketch, a sketch, in the middle of your page with the labels and annotations coming out from the edges of your sketch with arrows and boxes. However way you do decide to do it, just make sure you have it annotated. It is not enough to have the sketches themselves. Now, once you have these sketches in front of you, now I would advise you, of course, here I've got it on the screen just so I can show you while you watch the video. Whereas you will ideally have it in front of you on your desk. So you'll have your sketches in front of you, in your hand or on your desk, and you'll go through each sketch and basically attempt to create it on PowerPoint. Now, I know some schools will uh, you know, insist that you make a fully working um, uh, user interface using maybe Dreamweaver, for example, and the thing is, you're not going to get any extra marks. So there's no wrong way of doing this. Well, when I say that, I don't mean that you can't make mistakes. Of course you can. Uh, but what they're looking for really is a UI that comes close to looking how, looking like how it would look like at the end if you were to go away and do it properly. Um, but it's just the links they want to see working. Now, this will make sense in just a moment when I start to show you how it will look. Um, but what they don't expect you to do is, is do all the technical stuff. They don't expect any coding as such. So let me show you the first page. So obviously, here you go. This is my first sketch. Um, and you can see all I've basically got is a window. I've got a section, a rectangle at the top with the title itself. I've got a main button, a logo, and uh, some information here that helps uh, with this, you know, the accessibility needs should people get stuck. Uh, but that's not the only accessibility needs that I have. So if you look here, I've got accessibility feature four, I've got one here, but then one here at the top as well, because the button itself will be nice and large. And of course, in the evaluation later on of the, you know, on, you know, learning game C, you will go in and talk about your strengths and weaknesses. So you'll identify some of these points. So what you're going to do is you're going to open a new PowerPoint. So I'm going to go to file, and new. Now, if you haven't opened it yet, now I, I can show you here, but obviously uh, this um, layout will, you know, will may be different to you because, you know, de depending on what type of, um, uh, what version, sorry, of Windows you're using. So I've got the most updated version here. Uh, you might be using a different kind of Windows. But anyway, I've got my shortcut here. What you're looking for is all programs and you're looking for Microsoft. If I can find it, there is Microsoft Office and you're looking for PowerPoint. Anyway, I've got it open already, so I'm going to go to new here, and I'm just going to get a blank one and give it a second. So for you, it'll be nice and easy. You'll just have PowerPoint in front of you like so, and your sketches will be in front of you, maybe on your desk, on your hand, uh, or wherever it might be. Now, obviously, for the sake of this, this is one of the other reasons why I did this on, comp on the computer rather than hand uh, you know, hand-drawn sketches is so that I can flip between the two and show you what I mean. So, first things first, you'll see, you know, some of you may have noticed that the, the orientation itself, it's widescreen, I don't want that, so I'm going to change that. And it's usually in design, slide size here, go to standard, and ensure to fit, there we go and it's done. Now, before I carry on any further, if, you, if I go back here, you'll see that I need to call this the user interface first draft. Can you see that there? User interface, interface first draft. So I'm going to 
change, save, sorry, this before I carry on because it's always important. You never know, computers can be unpredictable. I'm going to press save and uh, find my folder. So you'll do the same thing. Find your folder, you know, component one, learning game C, and save it in there. In fact, I'm going to put it into my uh, hard drive instead. So you can see I've got my BTEC folder here, component one, learning aim C. And I'm going to call it the user interface first draft. Okay. That's your first step. Now, if you look at this, you'll see that I've got a bar at the top. Now, the bar does not change in any of my pages because I want it to be consistent. So I'm going to go to the this one here. And I'm going to go to, um, I believe it's in, nope, view, there it is, view, and I'm looking for slide master. Now, what slide master does is anything you do here, it applies to any page um, that you create afterwards. So I'm going to put insert, shape, I'm going to get a rectangle, and I'm going to put it at the top of the screen, like so, about there, maybe a little bit more there. Now, I need to remind myself, what did I say this is going to look like? So I've got a box at the top, and you see it says 8 here. So I'm going to go down here, design accent, sky blue bar to add contrast to the page and match the logo. So I'm going to go back over here and double click this, or go to format, shape fill, and find the color that you want. So I'm going to go for maybe this one here. Now the outline, I'm going to keep it the same as well. There we go, done. And I'm going to also copy this and put it into this top one here. And what it should do is put it on every single page. So they're all identical. Okay. Um, let's have a look. What else do I need to do? Go back over here. So I also need to have a text box. Can you see it says one here? Because, because this is the title. And one, I said this is a page title. The font will be Arial Bold. Uh, size 20. Remember, if 20 is not uh, big enough, I'm allowed to change it. This is just a starting point. So I've said 20 for, for now, and it's going to be centered. And of course, it's going to be white. So I'm going to go back to this, and I'm going to put a text box in there. So let's get insert, and let's put a text box. Actually, actually, let's go back here. And in fact, I can just use this, can't I? I'm just going to drag this up, like so. And what I need to do is I put this behind it. See arrangement here? Arrange. I'm going to put it to the back so the text box comes in front. And make sure this one here as well. Go to the back. There we go. So now the text box is in front. I'm going to go back inside here. I'm going to select so control and A. Control and A. And go over here to the font. Now I said Arial, so you choose the font that you said you're going to have. So I've gone to Arial there. I'm going to make sure it's all white. There we go, white. I said it's going to be bold and centered, and I said it's going to be a size 20. So let's go back here and change this to 20 and enter. Now, as you can see, it is a little bit on the small side, so I'm going to change this now to whatever size I think is you know best for this. So I'm going to go to 32 for now. So there you go. That's 32, done. Um, and I'm going to copy this text box, control and C, notice how I've selected the edge of the text box, control and C, uh, and go over here, control and V, and it puts it exactly in the same spot so that there's consistency. Okay, um, what else do I need? I also will need to look at the background. So the background here, number seven, you'll see background is white to match the logo. So I've got a white background, so that's okay as it is. Anything else that's going to be in the same page or uh, place. So you can see also that I've got this little text here at the bottom that's always in the same spot on every single page. So I'm going to put that in now so that it saves me some time. Now, I don't need this, this uh, date here, so I'm going to delete that. I also don't need this page number, so I'm going to delete that. And that means I can drag this out a little bit. In fact, I'll go right to about there, and then I'm going to ty type in what I said. So I'm going to put this. Now you're going to type it. I'm just going to save some time here, so it makes this video a little bit shorter. There we go. And I'm going to put it left aligned as well. 
Now, I'm going to make this a little bit larger, even though I said 2, main font, size 16, and I said font color blue, left aligned. Now, 16, there we go, so 16 is fine. Font color, I said blue, but I'm actually going to change my mind and put it red, and left aligned is fine. So like I said, you can change your you know, mind on certain things should you need to. So I'm going to get that. I need to go into this page here and delete anything I don't need from these pages. So that needs to be to the back and delete that. So there we go. Now, I'm hoping that's going to copy over. It should do. If not, we can just type it in afterwards. Um, because it looks like he hasn't copied it through. But let's have a look. Um, what else do I need to do? I'm going to go back to Slide Master and let's have a look at this. So close Master View. And at the moment, this is what I've got. And that, as you can see, the footer is not there, unfortunately. So I'll just go to Insert and go to Header Footer. And I can put it in here instead. So there we go. So apply to all. I'm going to show you how I did that because I know I went there a little too quickly. So Insert. Head on footer, click on footer, type in the message that you wanted. Now, some of you may not even have this. You may have something else. That's fine. Some of you, you know, this is a great place for like the company slogan, as an example. Um, press apply to all, and there it is. Now, it's not to the left, is it? So I'm going to just double check this again. Insert header footer, and make sure. Yeah, that's fine. I need to go back into view slide master. And make sure, and there we go, that's why it starts there. But I want it to be left aligned. Left aligned. And wait, there we go, left aligned as well. Okay, slide master, close, let's have a look. No, it hasn't done it yet. Okay, if it does that, you can, I'm hoping anyway, change it here. There we go. So, that, <coughs> excuse me, is that, and if I go back and remember, you're always going back to look at your sketches. So, so far I've got that there, and this is the welcome page. So, it's going to say, welcome to Draws in Medical Practice. Notice how I'm not copying the quotation marks, I'm not putting page size, because in the sketch you're identifying and explaining what you're going to have. In the real thing, you don't need to explain it here, this is just you typing it in. Now, for some reason, it's not letting me type in here. So what I'll do is just go in here. There we go. There we go. So which means I can delete that one and type it in here. So I'm going to paste that in. There we go. And it's black for some reason. And I know why. I'll go back to here. Slide master. And I believe I forgot to do it. Have I made that white? Let's have a look. Make that white, white, and white. There we go. No, it hasn't done it. Look, if it doesn't work, very simply, just change it in here. So that is what I said in my sketch. Title, title. <clears throat> now I'm going to delete this here because I don't need it. And so far, it's looking okay, but I need to have a button in the middle and the logo. So, I'm going to show you very quickly how the button is done. It's simply a case of in, in inserting a shape. And I decided to go for this shape here. Now, you could choose whatever shape you want. I'm going to draw it out, like so. And you need to change the way it looks by going to Format. And it's the same as uh, the box earlier on in the master slide. So, you click on the color that you want, there we go. And again, remind yourself what you said you're going to do on the sketch, your storyboard. So I've got three, four, five, six, and nine. So I've got, this is method of interaction, so I don't need to worry about that now. Uh, accessibility feature needs to be a large size to make it easier to use, that's fine. Um, contrast as well, five, sound, don't need to worry about that right now. Seven, here we go. No, sorry, six, nine, there we go. 
blue background, white aerial font, bold centered. So I'm going to go back over here, blue background, and I'm going to type in some words for right now. Um, main menu, I believe I said. Let's have a look. Yeah, that was fine. Yep. Main menu. Highlight. Make it bold. And this is where you start to have fun with it to make it look right. Centered as well. There we go. Done. <coughs> Excuse me. And there are other things that you can do with this. So if you go in here, um, you can add effects. I know I didn't mention it in the sketch themselves, but you can change them if you want to. So you can see there's a, a 3D effect here that you can add if you want to, or go to shape effects here and add some pre uh, presets here. Can you see? Makes it look a little bit more like a button. <coughs> Excuse me. So that there is basically it. Now, obviously, you have to make sure it's centered. So you'll see that PowerPoint prompts you with uh, lines that tell you where the center is. So that's where I want it to be. And the logo is going to go over here. Now, unfortunately, I don't actually have a logo. Um, hopefully, you should, have had, you should have a logo already set up. If not, just check out the video um, that I created early on that shows you how to make a logo. And you'll basically copy and paste the logo in here. Okay? Um, so that's the first page actually done. Other than the logo itself, you'll see that it matches it pretty clearly. Now, there are other things that you can do. You know, if you want to change the design of the font, I believe there are some features here that you can add to the font itself. So if you want to make it look um, like have an inner shadow, you can do. You can see it sort of sinks in. Yeah. And you can do the same thing with the buttons themselves. So I'm going to highlight that and go to format and do the same thing. The key thing the thing thing you need to see, you know, bear in mind ladies and gents is, you know, try to keep it consistent. You know, whatever you do in one page, you want to do it in every single page. And you know, there's nothing there's no harm in you trying things out. Uh, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Now I don't think this in this looks particularly well. So I'm gonna go back control and Z because I think that's just clearer to look at. Uh, same thing with the title, it's just easy to see. Some of you may like this 3D button, some of you may not. Some of you may want to make this smaller. Some of you may want to make it larger. It's completely up to you. No, just bear in mind though, you know, you know, this page for example, there isn't anything else there other than the logo that I'm going to put underneath it. So I may actually want to make this a bit larger and then, excuse me, in the evaluation, justify this change uh, by saying that it would be easier for people who may have visual needs. Because it's such a large button, you know, everyone will be able to see it. It's hard to miss as well. People who may have, <coughs> excuse me, people who may have um, issues, arthritis or anything like that, you know, physical needs will be able to, ease, you know, very easily uh, hit this button with their fingers. Um, and also, I just thought, actually, I know in the sketch I put the button at the top and the logo at the bottom. You might actually say, actually, I want to put the button down here and put the logo on top. As long as you justify it in the evaluation, why you made such a move, and I'll tell you why this could actually end up being a better move, if I can find that central line, there it is. Um, because you might say, okay, the reason why I moved it down and put the logo at the top instead is because you know users who might be in wheelchairs might find it more difficult to reach the top of the screen. So I've, in, I've actually put it lower down to make it a little bit easier for those individuals. It's thinking like that that's going to give you extra marks. Uh, but remember, those changes that you make here in the real UI, you have to remember and justify when you do your evaluation. So my advice to you, and this is something I'm going to make my students do as well, is have a little notebook in, in front of you. And anytime you make a change, ask yourself, why am I putting it there? Why am I changing this? Why am I changing the color? Why am I making this larger or smaller? Why am I moving uh, the text to the left or the right or in the center? Why am I adding this piece, piece of information? Why am I changing the size of the logo? Whatever it is that you're doing, ask your, the, the, the simple question, why? And write it down. Because when you do that, when you come to the evaluation, you don't have to remember everything. You have it written down. You can just tick them off as you go along, maximizing your opportunities and your, uh, you know, uh, the chance of you getting those top marks. So, how can we, you know, use this on the next pages? Well, very simply, I'm just gonna right-click this, and you can either duplicate or copy and paste. So I'm gonna just duplicate it. It gives me a second one. I'm now gonna go to the next page, 
And as I said early on, I'm not going to do every single page. I'm just going to show you a few tools just so you understand how to do this. And then I'm going to let you go away and use the same uh, skills, tools and method to go and create your whole UI. And you're going to do it for every single slide that you have drawn, hopefully in your sketches, in your storyboard. So. The next page is pretty much exactly the same. The titles change and I got six buttons now and the logo has moved position to the bottom right hand corner. So I've got this here. I'm going to move this across over here and I'm going to change the size first and change the size of the font because obviously I've got a few more buttons in this page now. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Now you have to bear in mind that, you know, even though, like, for example, here, exit's got four letters. So, yes, I could afford to make this font a little bit larger. But then I've got this button here that says, find me a pharmacy. And if I use the size of, say, 40 over here, it might be perfect for this button, but won't be perfect for this button here. And you can't have buttons that's got uh, a size 14 text and then another button right next to it that's got a size 25 or 40 or 60. It has to be consistent. Remember, house style... And you know, top marks come from consistency. There needs to be an element of professionalism in your design. So you think about the largest text. So I've got find me a pharmacy. So here's a little trick. I'm gonna write down find me a pharmacy here. I'll put capital P there. So I'm gonna put capital P there as well. I still don't need to keep it like that. And ask himself, can I fit it in there? So right now I've got a I've got a choice. I can either Make it smaller to fit in one line, like I have done in my design, my sketch. Or increase this so it's on two lines. So you have to ask yourself, okay, is that going too far? And I think that is. It's, there's no um, uh, white space at the top or the bottom. White space, boys and girls, is the margins that you keep around uh, certain items, text, images, and logos. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller until it fits a little bit nicer, there we go. So you can do it over two lines if you want to, and I know that's a slight change from this, and again, you just justify it and just say, you know, I wanna make it easy to read. Or you could make it as large as you can without going over two lines, so I'm gonna make this a bit smaller until it's there, there we go. Or extend the size of the button, and then see how far you can go with the size. Still not working, so therefore there's no point having that too large, so I'm gonna push this in a little bit more. There we go. And then start making the other buttons. Okay, so I'm going to keep it like this, actually. Um, no, actually, I changed my mind. I'm going to do it over two lines. Because remember, you get extra marks for user accessibility needs, making it easier for people to see and use. So I'm going to make it size 28. So can you see that 28? So I'm going <coughs> to, excuse me, copy this now. Click underneath, right click and paste or control and V and put one underneath it. Control and see this, control and V, and then drag this underneath this. There we go. And then I can just select all of these. Control and C, control and V, and move across. About there. <coughs> Excuse me. Now look at your sketches. Business hours is the first one, so go back over here. Business hours. And then I've got appointments. Find me a pharmacy is fine. Then I have charity. Now, if you do change the order, again, nothing wrong with that, as long as you justify it, make a note of it, obviously, and justify it uh, afterwards, explain why you made that change, because as long as there's a reason, you can actually get more marks from making that change. So there you go, done. And then I've got the space here for the logo. Now, I don't actually have a logo right now, uh, but like I said, I'm gonna copy and paste it in the same exact place. So let me show you how I uh, how I would do that. But before I do, I need a few more pages. So I'm going to do a different page now. So I'm not going to do uh, that one. I'm going to do, let's have a look. Let's do one that's slightly different because all of these here, you can see that's they're just buttons. That's just a text box here. Um, buttons, buttons. Okay, here we go. So we've got buttons 
and we got some text. This this here. So this is slightly different. So I want to do an appointments page now. Okay. So you can see this is called appointments. So actually, just remind myself, I've not changed the title. So this here is a main menu. So because if you look at the sketch again, I said it's called main menu. Again, I'm ignoring the speech marks and the page title here, just typing in exactly what I said this page is called. So you can see it says main menu here. Click away. Make sure you save this uh, as often as you can. Control and S is the easiest way, but you can always go to this button over here to save it as well. Anyway, so I'm going to duplicate this one. Right click, duplicate. There we go. And I'm going to do the appointments page. But more specifically, signing in. Actually, let's do the main appointments page first. So this is appointments. I've got three buttons and then two buttons over here. So I'm going to go over here and let's move two of these over here. I can delete, we'll click away, delete one of these. And let's remind myself what I said, main menu and exit. Actually, let's undo that and delete. No, actually, no, because I want to keep it exactly the same position. So I am going to delete this one and just type in exit here and main menu and let's have a look what else do I have sign in it sign in book a new appointment cancel appointment so I've got sign in book a new appointment and the last one was cancel an appointment. Let's make sure that's a small a consistency, as I said. Cancel an appointment. There we go. Now, I've got all that space and I've actually made it clear here on my sketch that it's going to be quite large just to fill the space a little bit better. So I'm going to select all these control and select the buttons. And that way, if I change one, it changes all of them. So it's all consistent. So I'm going to move it about here, I think. It's so nice and simple, not too close, but I want the same kind of margins. Can you see this white space here? And this one is pretty similar now. There we go. So I've done that page. Just make sure there's nothing else missing. No, that's fine. I'm going to leave the logo till the end for now. Um, and now I need to duplicate this again. So right click and duplicate. And I'm going to do the first one here because this is a page that's slightly different. You can see I've got these boxes here. So this one's called appointments signing in. So I'll go back over here and oops, sorry, I forgot to change this, haven't I? I keep forgetting about this. Appointments. There we go. Yep. Uh, this one now, the new one's called appointments signing in. So I'll go back over here, this one here. Appointments dash signing in. There we go. So looking back at this, you'll see I've got two buttons here and these two can stay exactly where they are. So I'm going to keep them as they are. And I'm going to get two buttons for the bottom here. So I'm going to delete these two. In fact, let's delete all of these. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to copy these. Control and C, Control and V and move them down here. And in fact, I can move this one across to about there. And notice that I made them a bit smaller anyway. So I'm going to make these holding control, select both of them. Let's make them a little bit shorter and a little bit wider. And I can move these across. There we go. First one says search. And the last one is sign in. There we go. And we need some information here. So you see first name, surname, tech, date of birth, and postcode. So to do this, see this, this is slightly different. I'm going to go to uh, text box. <coughs> Excuse me. First name. And I'm going to select and make sure this is Arial because that's what I've identified early on. And I'm sure there's more to it. Let's have a look at this. Main font, Arial, font size 16, blue, <coughs> excuse me, and left aligned. So this should be <coughs> blue. So I'm going to choose a darker blue just because it's easier to read then. There we go. Left aligned is fine. And I said 16. So I'm going to make this smaller. There we go. 
And in fact, to be honest, we can make it a little bit larger. There's nothing wrong with that. There's plenty of space. So I'm going to duplicate this now, Control and C, Control and V, and push this underneath. And you'll see that line. There we go. That's exactly the same now. You can see the line showing you. So this is going to be changed to surname. There we go. And now I'm going to copy this one, Control C, Control V. Move this down, make sure the lines are the same. So this now indicates that the gaps between the first two and the second two are identical. So I'm going to put that there. And I believe this was date of birth. Let's have a look. Yes, date of birth in full. I believe that's how I typed it. Yes, I did. And now I'm going to select the edge of this control C, control and V, drag this down, do the exact same thing. And again, you can see that's telling me it's all completely identical in terms of the gaps. And this should be. Um, what was it now? Let's have a look. Postcode. There we go. And what I need now is some boxes. So insert. Sorry, insert. There we go. And let's just get a shape. And this time it's going to be a normal rectangle. Draw it out to about there. And it would make sense to make sure this is also white. So let's make this all white. There you are. And once you're happy with it, it's a simple case of Control C, Control V, drag it down, make sure it's identical about there, I reckon. There we go. Control C, Control V, same thing. There we go. Control C, Control V. There you go. Now, this is all you have to do all the way through to make sure you have all the sketches done. Now, I've obviously skipped a few and I've not done all of them yet. The reason for that is because I don't want to waste making an entire video showing you the same thing over and over and over. I've shown you pretty much all you need to know here, uh, other than the fact that, of course, if you're going to have, let's just say, one of these pages, if I look at my sketches here, uh, there's one that says map. Just get a picture of Google Maps, just literally put it in there, uh, just to indicate that. I've got another one here about a calendar, so just get a picture of a calendar that you'd find from an online form and paste it in there, because it's just to give you an idea of what it could look like. The only thing I haven't shown yet before I finish off the video is to link them, to actually make it look like they're working. So first things first, let's save it again so we don't lose it. Now, I just click on this button here, on the edge, not the text, and you right click and you go to um, hyperlink. And what we're going to do is going to go to a place in this document on the left hand side. And you know this is called main menu, so you're going to find main menu. There it is. And you press OK. Now I'm going to go back to this one now, and I'm going to click on the edge. Now I don't actually have a business hours page yet, but I do have an appointments one. So I'm going to click on appointments here, right click, hyperlink, and find the appointments main page. So you can see there it is, appointments. Done. Now, exit is going to go back to the, the welcome page. So I'm going to go to right click this one and go to hyperlink and go to the welcome page. Here we are. And if we go to the next page here, don't have anything here yet. Actually, I do have signing in so I can hyperlink this one. Right click hyperlink to uh, signing in. There it is. Press OK. And I can have the main menu one done as well. So right click hyperlink main menu and I can also hyperlink the exit which is to go back to the welcome page okay now I've linked all that I can of course you can't do the rest until you have the pages to link it to so once you've done all of them you can link them now the beauty of this now is if I save it and I run it so if I go to the presentation view, here we go. You'll see when I put my mouse over it that the, the cursor changes from an arrow to a ha to hand. Yeah. And we're, what we're doing, we're sort of emulating what it would look like once you've finished. And this is what the user interface will look like. So when you click it, it should go to the main menu. And when I click on the appointments page, it'll go to appoint appointments. If I press exit, it's going to go to the main welcome page. I can go to appointments again and go back to the main menu and choose something else. Okay, so this is what you're going to do until you have every single page. <clears throat> Excuse me. The only other thing I haven't included here is, of course, logos. And what would be nice is to actually have some images just to make it look a little bit nicer. This is why I actually kept some space in here. And, you know, just so I can add pictures that would look nice. So here might be uh, nice to have like a... Um, a friendly, actually, one second. Do I actually have anything on that page? Let's have a look. Have I missed something out? 
yeah, there's nothing here. So maybe a picture of, of a friendly doctor or something like that. Just to make it look a little bit, you know, just to break the pages up a little bit, just add some um, some some interesting features. But notice how I've got this consistency, you know, the, the top bar doesn't change, colour scheme's exactly the same, the buttons are the same style as well, the font's the same. So that's what's going to give you the top marks. All, all you need to do now is make sure you do every single page that you've identified in the sketches. But remember, anytime you make a change, there's there's nothing wrong with doing that as long as you make a note of it and why you've done it, just so that you can get the next part of the work, the task, uh, done a lot easier as well. So use the features that I've just shown you, all the skills and tools and a method to do every single page. And that should basically give you your first draft.